Hey, here we are. This is Morgan, live from Highland Cycles here in Montrose, Colorado, uh, for our first ever live uh, Q&A show discussing things. Uh, uh, I don't really know what I'm doing here. <laughs> Just uh, trying to reach out and spread the gospel of two wheels, like we say, and uh, help anybody. Uh, today we're gonna talk about mooses, uh, bib mooses talk about why we like them, all that kind of stuff. Uh, give some people some time to get um, uh, on here, see if anybody's gonna watch this thing or if I'm just gonna be here by myself the whole time. Um, I know it's morning time, there we go, we got someone on there. Um, I, probably a lot of you guys are working. Seems like most uh, dirt bikers have to go to work. Wade, what are you doing? There's Wade Shear right there. I'm here to learn. Nice. Wade is here to learn things. Um, so yeah, hey, come around here, Wade, and say hi. Good morning, Facebookers. <laughs> so yeah, we're uh, let's start with the first and most important question: is what is a bib moose? If uh, you don't know, uh, most of you guys probably know, but if you don't, um, this is a chunk of one. That right there is a worn out one. Um, but basically, it's a foam insert for your tire. Uh, that means that you can't have flats, period. What up, Jamin Littlefield? How's it going? Um, the beauty of a bib moose is that you can't have flats. That is the absolute main reason that I run them. Um, it's not for performance sake. It's not for ease of installation, that's for sure. It's because I don't want to get flats. When I go ride my dirt bike, I just want to ride my dirt bike, and I don't want to have to fiddle with anything on the trail. Um, there are, in my opinion, lots of, there's lots of good reasons to run them, um, especially racing. If you like to race and you're gonna spend lots of money going to race out of state or you know many hours away and you're spending all this money, why would you possibly go somewhere and uh, get there and then get a flat and lose, you know, waste the whole time? Um, obviously, the one big downside to me is the cost. They're not cheap. They're 125 bucks a piece, uh, pretty much no matter which version you go with, uh, whether it be the Nitro Moose, what up, Jason Podol, um, or uh, Michelin. Pirelli makes uh, bibs. Dunlop makes bibs, X-Grip makes bibs, lots of people make bibs. Some of them are really expensive. Uh, the Pirelli is probably the best moose I've ever used. It's a really, 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 really good feel. It's nice and squishy right from the get-go and it lasts a long time, but it's 200 and something dollars a piece. Cool. So it's, yeah. Uh, I tried to set, they were awesome, but I just couldn't bear um, spending that kind of money on bibs because they do still wear out. Um, uh, so I'm a big fan of the Nitro Moose, as you can see, that's the one I've been running. I ran Michelins for years and years and years before that, and um, Michelins are great bibs, they do the same thing. Problem is they don't last as long, um, they break down a lot faster, and they get really dead feeling, like too, almost too soft too fast, so they... They just don't feel right in the tire. Um, hey, Podol. The, uh, yeah, the, so the Michelins are great, but the pro like I said, they they get really soft really fast. Some people like that, the, the dead feeling is good for a lot of folks. Um, I don't mind it being real dead um, because it keeps the wheel on the ground. Um, and the longer the wheel is on the ground, the harder you can accelerate forward, the better you can steer, all that stuff. Um, the nice thing about the Nitro Moose is that I'm getting at least double the time. What up, Jeremy Schoening? Brap, can't wait to ride with you this weekend uh, over in Sargent's. Um, I, I'm getting at least double the time out of my Nitros. I'm getting probably five, six rear tires uh, out of a rear and three or four fronts. Um, for me, that's a season. Uh, I do get out a lot and ride a lot, and I hit things really hard in the rocks because I'm not very talented at riding a motorcycle, but I like to do it. Um, the, uh, and for me, that is 
worth the money to have something that last that long uh, a lot of other people are you know maybe two sets a year so you're probably gonna see numerous seasons uh, Jim and nitro has been good for me they're more dense and last longer tell us what lube you like to use in them there we go awesome question so I just talked to the nitro moose guys uh, Matt over there gave me a call because I told him we were gonna do this thing they are not sponsoring this by any way um, just so you know uh, I uh, they just, I wanted them to share it so lots of people would maybe join and watch. Um, so, lube. The official line from Nitro is you gotta use their lube. It is uh, almost pure silicone. Um, it lasts a really long time. Uh, it's pretty easy to install. It comes in a pretty big tube. I'll go grab one of those in a second, but um, it's a lot bigger than the Michelin tube, which is nice. So you get more lube. Um, they assured me that it is it holds up as good as anything else and it's enough and all that stuff but here's my personal take i like uh this stuff right here it's murphy's tire lube i don't even know where it says murphy's on there but if you look on amazon look up murphy's tire soap it's mounting lube for um uh big like semi tires i think is what it was originally for i like it because it's First of all, dirt cheap. I think this whole thing was $29 shipped, uh, Amazon Prime, which is uh, cheap. Does lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of bibs. The other nice thing is, since it's this huge uh, bucket, you just reach in there, grab as much as you need, slather it inside the tire, slather it all over the bib, shove it in there, and you don't have to be like, you're not worried about the money part of it because um, the nitro lube comes in little tubes and they're like five bucks a piece and in my opinion I think you need at least two for the rear and one for the front um, Nitro says that's not true. They say it's more than enough um, I'm just telling you what I think I think that you need more so um, What up David? How's it going? Hey AJ? Um, I think you need more lube, you know as in life lube is always for your friend so, um, the Murphy's is great. Like I said, you just slather the heck out of it in there. It's really holding up well. Um, it's water-based, so people back east say it's not that great because it could, you know, if you're doing a lot of, in a low, real wet conditions, uh, a lot of river crossings, a lot of things like that, um, it can go away if it gets in there. Um, yes, Jamin, more lube is always better. <laughs> the, uh, uh, um, but it, you know, the water soluble stuff could come, you know, go out. Uh, I wear through tires fast enough that it, the, uh, how long the lube lasts in there isn't a problem. Um, if you're going to do like one set of tires a year, uh, and you don't ride real, real hard, maybe the silicone stuff is better because it would be, you know, it would theoretically hold up better to lots of different conditions. Um, and I can say that when you pull them out like this bib right here, here, I'll pull it over here. This is what a used, hammered rear bib from T. Morgan Spradling me, uh, my uh, bike looks like. Um, and it's all cut up and torn from hitting rocks too hard and falling down and things like that. But you can see it's still shiny. Um, and this one, I only use uh, the nitro lube on this one because I wanted to try it out and see what they said. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, it's good. I've had a lot of people, I show pictures of this on Facebook and people are like, oh, more lube, you gotta do more lube. And I, you know, I put on the amount that they said cause I wanted to test it in the conditions they, they wanted me to use. And actually I was really happy with it. Uh, this is how all bibs have ever looked for me. Um, after a while I hit things, by the way, this bib really is still, uh, good. I could tape it up or shove it into another tire and be fine. That's the beauty of bibs is that no matter what they look like, they can't go flat. So you just shove them in there. Jeff Booker, Chandler Henry, what is up? Good to see you. Um, so yes, this bib's still good. If anybody wants it, you can come down and have it. Uh, I'll give it to you. It's an 18. It was originally a 140. Uh, now it's probably more like a 110. Um, that's something I want to touch on is that bibs when they wear out, 
they get cut like that, they get small spots, they shrink, they deteriorate, eventually it's like riding on a flat. Um, but it's not riding on a flat. So that's the beauty, of, that's the wonderful thing about this is that you're never gonna go all the way flat. You're always gonna get back to your truck. You're always gonna have fun. Um, a lot of people don't like bibs and they like the tubeless system. Um, they don't wanna use tubes, so they use tubeless. Also made by the new tech guys uh, that make the nitro mousses. Uh, I'll give you the official Morgan Spradling Highland Cycle stance on tubeless. I don't love it. It's too complicated for me. Um, not that my brain can't handle understanding what to do, but I don't like the fact that I have to check two tire pressures per wheel every time I ride. So that's four different things I gotta check. Gotta make sure the inside is up to 100. Uh, Travis McCarthy, what's happening? Uh, gotta make sure the inside is up to 110 pounds. Uh, Eric Palumbo, what's up? Then you gotta air out the, you know, the outside and you gotta set it to six PSI or whatever anyway. That's too much to bother with when I go ride. Um, as you guys know, all I do is work on bikes all day long, every day. So when I wanna ride my bike, I just wanna ride my bike. I don't even like to check chain tension. That's why I run really fancy high dollar chains because they don't stretch. Um, so for me, a bib is all about quality time on the bike. I just take my motorcycle, I shove it into my van. As long as it's got oil in it, coolant in it, and gas in it, I'm gonna be just fine. Nothing's, you know, I'm gonna get to ride, unless I, of course I crash my brains out and break something. But um, I don't like to have the chance of not getting to ride, and that is, that's the biggest thing. I just, um, the tubeless system is really, really, really good if you wanna run super low PSI for traction. Uh, it's more of a back east thing, honestly where there aren't a bunch of rocks and things to tear sidewalls on tires. Um, guys love them back east where it's really muddy and rooty and slippery and you can drop that thing down to like four to six PSI and it like makes this huge big contact patch up through that stuff. It's great um, for that. So, but for me living in the Rocky Mountains and again, not being talented enough to miss the rocks, uh, I need to have just bulletproof wheels that aren't gonna go flat ever. I hate changing flats on the side of trails. I love the fact that I don't have to carry any tools for that anymore. I just have to have tools to fix the rest of the things I break, but I don't have to have tire irons. I don't have to have air. I don't have to have a tube. That's probably three pounds worth of junk that I can take out of my backpack and pitch. Uh, Wade, do you have any questions? No. Since Wade's right no. here. There's no, but I don't like flats either. There we go. Flats suck. That's all there is to it. Flats are no good. Um, they ruin days, honestly, because <laughs> as soon as you get a flat, I mean, unless you're an ISDE champion, you're probably not going to get it done all that quickly. <laughs> so it's going to take a little while. You're going to have to find a place to prop the bike up and blah, 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 blah. And hopefully not pinch the tube, which I've seen happen numerous times, and that's a lot of fun. Um, and with a bib, you just go ride the thing. Um, yes, they are expensive. That's one thing I tell everybody. We sell a ton of bibs, by the way. We sold, we looked at it like 23 front nitros alone um, since uh, January. And we're just now getting into our real season. So uh, we sell lots and lots of bibs to lots and lots of people, normal people with normal paychecks and you know things like that. They just save their money, put it towards bibs um, because they know that their quality quality time is worth more than 250 bucks for the set you know um, I ask uh, people all the time what they would pay to not have a flat when they're 50 miles from their truck the bike goes flat in the bottom of a ravine and now they've got to deal with it in the pouring rain you know how much is that worth to you uh, to me that's worth way more than 250 bucks <laughs> so if I can just continue riding and not worry about something like that um, again if you know like like I said the tubeless system people are always talking about that um, and I don't like I said I'm just not into it uh, hang on I got a question here Chris Whittle I've always thought bibs sounded great my hesitations have always been the weight and in insulation convince me otherwise right okay great so yes they are a little heavy um, I wish you could feel this in Facebook world 
Uh, this is just a chunk, that's the whole one. It is a little heavy. Um, I don't have the numbers, but when you hold a super heavy duty tube and a bib, it's not that much different. It is heavier, I'm not gonna lie to you, um, but it's not that much heavier. So to me, that's not a big deal. Um, I also don't spend a lot of time in the air where wheels are spinning and gyroscopic motion makes a big difference. I mean, it definitely makes a difference turning and off-road and all that stuff. I understand the physics behind it. Um, again, I'm not that I'm not a great enough rider necessarily to notice, um, but I do know that all the pros are running bibs when they go racing. And uh, I mean, yeah, they probably have fancy pantsy cool guy ones and all this stuff, but I'm sure theirs are heavier than tubes also, uh, but they still run them because they don't want flats. Uh, installation, great question, Chris. Installation can be a giant pain in the butt, uh, especially the first time you do it. You will wrestle, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> You're gonna wrestle with your first bib change, um, especially if you don't have the right tools, you're trying to do it on the ground. Um, here, I brought a couple tools. Uh, so this is my favorite um, tire iron for bibs. It's the Motion Pro 16 inch steel heavy duty thing. Uh, again, I don't have to have it, but um, in my pack, so I don't care how big and heavy it is here. This, and then let me grab the stand. A stand like this. Uh, the most important part about this stand for bibs is this thing right here. Because it's like a lever for breaking beads and doing things like that. Um, there are lots of options for stands out there. I don't like, uh, I mean, actually I like the Rabaconda. It's just crazy expensive and I don't need one. That one I got for 150 bucks from offroadchampions.com. Again, not a sponsor. Actually, I don't even think they sell it. We sell some versions for a little less, 75 bucks uh, that they make um, that, are, that work just great. CJ Ando, what's up? Um, but once you know how to install a bib, it's really not that bad. Um, we're gonna be teaching a clinic. I had enough people respond. I'm hopefully gonna video that whole thing too, uh, make it live or put it up on the Facebook worlds. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll let you guys know when that's, you know, stay tuned, like the page, follow us, all that stuff. Um, Aaron Rosen, what's up? Um, so installation, like I said, it can be a bitch. The other thing is if you live near a shop like Highland Cycles, we change them for the same price we change normal tires. So if you bring me wheels, it's 20 bucks, no matter whether there's bibs or uh, tubes or tubeless or whatever. So you can always just do that. Um, I personally, just I don't worry about the changing initially it was tough uh, I got the system down if you, you really need about four tire irons and a decent stand that's gonna set you back about 130 bucks 140 bucks for the cheap version Rabicondas are 300 something like that and then plus tire irons but they are really 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 nice uh, Michael Thomas what's happening uh, Steve McEwen thanks thank you very much Steve uh, for the comment um, and then I think I'm going to scroll down here. Jamin Littlefield says expensive, but very worth it. No one likes the guy who holds everyone up changing a tube and DNF is no fun at the races. I couldn't agree more. Josh Boo What's happening over from the front range? Um, to me, you know, if it is, let's say it takes you 30 minutes to change a wheel or change a bib. Okay. Um, big deal. Do that in your, uh, garage maybe it takes you an hour to do both wheels and you uh, drink a beer or two or eight I don't know how many beers you drink but uh, or whiskey or in my case water um, but get it done have your friends over make it fun put a movie on the screen in the man cave I don't know do something um, and make it you know fun Jack Brown Jim Wells what's happening good to see you guys uh, it's not that bad. I'm happy to answer questions all day long. The The YouTubes are full of people changing bibs. Like I said, we're gonna be doing a bib clinic here uh, soon, probably in the next week, um, and showing people what's going on. Uh, it, it still includes air, right? No, Ron, there is no air. Well, there's air in everything if you look at the molecular level, but 
No, there's no air. That is the inside of a bib. Um, there is a new bib out there that is um, got some tube in it. Uh, yes, jo uh, Josh, yes. I get uh, five rear tires. Um, Brady Meter, what is a bib? A bib, okay, yeah, Brady's probably giving me a hard time because I'm not calling them mooses. Uh, I call them bibs because it's shorter and I like efficiency. But yes, I guess technically they are moose tubes, M-O-U-S-S-E, bib mooses. Um, unless, Brady, you're asking what it is, uh, which I discussed earlier, but I will go over it again for everybody who's here. Uh, and yeah, I know. Uh, it is a foam insert for your tire so you have zero flats, period, ever. Um, Jim, you have scars from installing bibs, fair enough. Um, I have, I have emotional scars, uh, deep down from installing bibs, uh, especially from the beginning. Uh, Javier is not here yet, Jim. Uh, he is probably sleeping because he's been celebrating the World Cup recently. Uh, Uruguay has been winning, so he's super excited. Um... Uh, let's see. Oh, sizing, 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 sizing for your bibs. Super duper, duper important, especially in installation. Um, one of the big problems that people have with installing bibs is they get the wrong size bib for the wrong size tire. If you get too big of a bib to put to try to cram into too small of a tire, a couple things happen. First, tears. Second, physical injury. And then third, if you get the thing on there, you're running on a bowling ball of a rear or front tire that just is horrible handling. So um, you don't want to do that. Um, the one problem with Michelin's uh, and some of the other ones that I've used, uh, Pirelli's, uh, Dunlop is another manufacturer that makes one that are really hard to get. Um, they're pretty, uh, what, Brady, what do you say? S yes, very stiff if you put too big of a thing. Um, Jim Wells lube. That's what I use, Murphy's. Um, uh, no, you're not able to adjust air pressure, Jack. Uh, they slowly, they break in and they get softer and softer until they're worthless. So they, they start off a little bit stiff, I would say. I mean, even if you get the right size. Uh, to me, they don't, I do a test with customers all the time. They bring me a tire to put a bib in and then I... Um, take their tire with 10 pounds of pressure in it, which is pretty low, and I bounce it like a basketball. Then I put the bib in, and then I go bounce it, and it goes, thump, and it hits the ground. Of course, it bounces a little bit, but um, it's nice because it keeps the wheel on the ground. Uh, Josh Budimlia, how often do you relube them? I only lube them every time I put a tire on. Uh, I go through tires pretty fast, like probably six sets a year. So um, for me, I don't need to relube them. Uh, if you're going to do them more, then uh, you can, um, if you're gonna run tires for longer, uh, take them off every so often and relube them. I found with the Murphys, if you put enough on there, it really lasts a long time. You don't have to mess with it. Yes, you can. Brady says you can drill holes in them and make them softer. That's what the pro guys do. Um, they they drill holes in them. Uh, they also have this like liquid that they put on them that breaks them down to make them soft, uh, to make them super soft. They're also sponsored. They're also sponsored, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they don't have to buy new ones. Uh, Jim, similar to what PSI, I would argue that when you first put them on, a brand new bib, brand new tire, it's probably 15, 16 pounds-ish is what it feels like. Um, but not exactly because of the deadness of it because it doesn't have the what they call pneumatic deflection. Big word, 25 cent word for everybody out there. Um, but they don't have that bounce to them. So... It's 15 PSI as far as cornering hard and, you know, when you're going to a thing really hard and uh, it doesn't want to roll, but it's not as bouncy as 15 PSI. Um, so better traction, I would argue. Uh, Time-wise, how long will they last up to a year? Oh yeah, all, all day, Wade. Um, though you get a year out of them easy. The, uh, oh well, oh, hold, let me back up. You'll get a year out of them uh, depending on how you ride. If you do a lot of high-speed desert stuff, maybe not. Um, speed and heat is what kills bibs. Uh, and hitting things and cutting them also, like this thing, I'll bring this hammered one back down. These cuts are from me and my lack of talent hitting things really hard and the rim coming down and going through, which would have been a pinch flat 
for sure with a tube, which would have caused much sadness and tears on the side of the trail and a short day. Um, but with this, it caused this. Um, big. I didn't know. I just kept riding, which is nice. Um, the. Uh, but if you do a lot of desert stuff on a dual sport, you're probably not going to see a lot of time out of them. I have a set in my XR 650R. They're not holding up great, honestly, because <laughs> that thing goes fast and it's heavy. Um, but it's not really what they're for. Um, I mean, the Dakar guys run them uh, because they're changing them every night and doing, you know, and they, again, they're, a lot of those guys are sponsored and they don't care about spending 50, 60 grand on a race. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, big deal. Cole Carmichael, what's happening? Uh, most normal riders, I would say, you know, B, C level riders, uh, even A riders are gonna get um, a year out of them for sure. Uh, Willie Sharp, what's happening, man? Good to see you. Um, so yeah, I, I, to me, it's worth the money, uh, again, to have zero problems. I, I like zero problems. That's why I run all the guards on my bike. Uh, it's because I don't want to break things because um, I fall down a lot. So, uh, yeah. Let's see. I am the king of pinch flats. Mooses saved my life. Yes, thank you very much. Hashtag mooses saved my life. <laughs> I agree, Wade. I am also, I'm just hard on equipment. I beat on things, and uh, I don't like that. Do you run rim locks? Okay, good. Wade asked a question. Josh, I'll get to you about the feel of various uh, brands of bibs. First, rim locks. Yes, I run rim locks. I used to not run rim locks in the Michelins. They said not to. Uh, when I started running nitros, I actually used their lube, which is super, super slippery. And I actually had some real slippery, uh, that was an awesome TV moment. Uh, some real slip situations um, with the rear wheel uh, because it was all lubed up and I went out on a real wet day, actually down in Oklahoma at a race and it was like spinning like crazy. It was a pain in the butt. So I do run rim locks. Uh, Nitro says to run rim locks. It's actually not that much harder to install them. Um, uh, feel of various brands of bibs. Yes, Michelin first. Uh, Michelin starts off pretty soft. Um, I would say softer than the Nitro, but then it uh, and it breaks down really fast. And it, to me, the Michelin's almost a little too soft and dead. Um, I don't. I don't love. Uh, the feel of the Michelin. Now, I used to love it, but now that I've run nitros, I, uh, um, I, I like the nitros a lot better. So the nitro is more like running air. Um, it, it holds better in corners. That's the biggest thing I hear from uh, fast guys, is that when you dive into a corner, you're hard on the gas, and you're railing a berm, the nitro doesn't want to uh, roll and mush as easy. So you get a better, uh, a better, a better feel. The Pirelli, hands down, the best feeling bib I've ever run, but like I said before, it's 200 and something dollars a wheel, and it just is too much money. I can't can't spend that kind of money on a bib. It's just, if, maybe if they're money no object, I'd try to run those longer. Um, Steve Elms, good to see you, first of all. Uh, what size uh, do you run? So the coolest thing, I'm glad you mentioned that, because I started going down that and I found a rabbit hole like squirrel. Nitro Moose has an awesome sizing chart. Uh, I talked, like I said, I talked to Matt yesterday from uh, Nitro. He lives up in Wisconsin, anyway, somewhere in the Midwest. And he has measured hundreds and hundreds of tires with uh, calipers and tape measures, and they know the size of their bibs, obviously, and has come up with a really, 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 really awesome chart that shows you what size for what size tire, what brand and everything like that. That's on their website. So go to nitrosmoose.com, I believe. Google it. It's easy to find. I should figure that out. Sorry, Nitro Moose. Um, like I said, they're not sponsoring this one. Hopefully they'll sponsor some in the future. But um, they, uh, the, um, I lost my train of thought. Anyway, awesome sizing chart. Use that. Please use it because if you don't, you'll get it all jacked up. So, um, so that's what I do. Steve, does it matter what tire? Doesn't matter what brand, Cole. Um, like I said, the chart makes everything uh, like way easier. Um, we stock uh, one front. The the bigger front that they make is giant, and I don't use those big fat front tires yet. Uh, I'm getting ready to try. I'll try one of those fatty fronts here soon, and I'll probably put that big bib in it. Uh, big moose, excuse me, Brady. Um, 
but uh, I will probably, um, but we stock a uh, 120 and a 110 rear, um, which is uh, pretty, what you, so dead feeling Michelin Nitro feels more like a tube. Yes, has a bit of bounce, not as squirmy, I agree. If my bed movie starts to go flat, how, if my <laughs> bed movie starts to go flat, how can I get a little bit more life um, out of that? Maybe a bicycle in two or what? Anyway, um, thanks, Jamin. Uh, so start to go flat, more life. Awesome question, Wade. I'm glad you mentioned that. So I'm the king of cheap, and I don't want to you know, buy more bibs all the time. I don't have lots of money. Despite what everybody thinks, there's not a ton of money in the motorcycle industry. <laughs> but, uh, um, but I do like having nice stuff, and I don't like having flats. So when my bib gets a little small, uh, the first thing I do is I wrap a tube around it. I'm lucky enough to have tubes here all the time with holes in them from customers who get flats. So um, I got a pile of tubes out back. I slit down the middle of the tube, um, take the valve stem, throw that away, and then wrap that around the bib and then shove that back into the new tire. And that helps take up a bunch of room. It really, <laughs> it really works. Yeah, I'm rich. The, uh, uh, um, so that's the first step. Um, if you're really feeling broke and you break that down too far, then you can take one of your old bibs, if you have old bibs, um, and you can cut chunks out of it. You can just slice chunks out and shove it in there. Um, everybody's like, oh, but you know, it's all separate pieces. Well, who cares? It can't go flat anyway. Who cares if it's more pieces? You have 38 pieces of bib in there. Um, it's gonna get soft really fast like that, but it won't go flat. That's the whole thing. It won't go flat and you can still ride your dirt bike. Um, let's see. Uh, no, oh, yeah, Wade said you can add a piece of old bib. There we go. Cole, perfect, thank you. And yes, Brader, I'm super duper rich. Uh, the, uh, you're the guy driving from Oklahoma up here to ride with us. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, any other questions right now? Josh likes tire balls. Um, so, oh, wait, hold on. Oh, like tire balls then, but no flats. Yeah, tire balls... I have an awesome story I'm gonna tell you really quickly about tire balls. So I was at a race in Farmington, New Mexico, practicing, and if you've ever been there, it's nothing but sand whoops, you know, 38 feet deep for as far as you can see. Uh, I don't love that race. Um, and I'm practicing, going around the track at a really slow rate of speed um, because I suck in the sand. And as I'm going, the I come around a turn and I look out in front of me and there's this guy, I don't know who he was, I don't even remember his number, it was years ago, laying on the ground, his bike is all cattywampus, upside down crazy, and his rear tire is off of the rim and wrapped around the swing arm stuff and there are tire balls everywhere. And I'm sure it was a bit of an optical illusion but it looked like there were thousands of them. And I don't know what exactly happened. I don't know if he didn't have enough of them in there. I don't know what was going on. But that day, I decided instantly that I would never put <laughs> tire balls in anything ever because it was ridiculous. Yeah, Brady, tire balls are three levels of poop. Um, yeah, I don't, anyway, I don't, I don't. Um, and William, what's happening? Good to see you. I would argue, you know, people talk a lot about the feel. They want to know about the feel. They want to know if it's going to be good for their super go fast moments. Um, I would argue that most of us can't tell a giant difference. Now, some people can. I get that. Some people are really sensitive to suspension and things like that. Other people like me, Jack, what's happening? Um, I just run over things and I just run over them as fast and as hard as I can. I just don't care. I just don't want flats. Um, I, that's the last thing I want is a flat. It ruins my day. So um, to me, the tubeless system, normal, actually, if I had to choose between tubeless and tubes, I'd choose tubes because it's less complicated. Uh, Cole, how do they work in motocross and supercross? They work really great. Mark, good to see you. Thanks for watching. Um, they work great. Uh, if you use fresh ones, a lot of motocross guys don't like them because they they break down, they get flat. If you don't have a giant budget, then it, it sucks. So 
Um, also in Europe, there's lots of options for different stiffnesses of bibs, uh, bib mousses. And so um, you can set that up for different track conditions. Um, it's hard on motocross, honestly, because they, uh, guys want to change tire pressure based on track conditions all the time. And you, you can't do that easily with a bib mousse. Uh, that's one of the things. Yes, Garrett Anderson, you do need some before powder horn, especially powder horn, um, because the, uh, um, they, uh, the powder horn's nasty, rocky thing, and you, they, you catch them out of, the, out of the blue. How come fast guys like Shane Watts didn't flat all the time running tubes? Um, first, that's a, uh, that's a good question. And Fritz, um, Fritz is uh, one of those guys too. He never ran bibs. Uh, bib mooses back in the day when he was super duper 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 fast um, fastest American in six days and all that stuff um, guys like me Josh complain about flats because I don't have the talent I think that's the big difference is that the talent level between Shane Watts and me is so very very different <laughs> and honestly the fastest guys I've ridden with um, the uh, they don't hit things like I hit things they, they're better riders honestly um i also think they probably ran more uh pressure um and they rode older bikes faster than i could ever ride a, a new fast cool guy bike so um i really think uh thanks jack appreciate it um i really think that uh talent has a lot to do with that um they they just are more careful they also didn't bend pipes as fast as i bend on my two-stroke <laughs> They, they don't bend rims as much as I do. Uh, they're also better at changing tires. So, um, but I agree. Uh, it seems like a lot of those older fast guys just didn't bother. But I think you'll find that a lot of those older fast guys are now running uh, mooses because you bet, Cole. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, because of the, they don't want to hassle. They don't. You know, you can be less careful. Um, uh, the other thing is I was riding with uh, Jeff Booker. I don't know, Jeff, Jeff, I don't know if you're still watching, but uh, and he took a big nail uh, to his tire, probably because of Jeremy Schoening's uh, driveway and his construction. But um, anyway, he that would have ended the day, um, or at least really impaired the day uh, if he had had that. So I uh, had a tube in there. Um, tubeless on that one, he could have plugged it really quickly. But... Uh, they, um, uh, anyway, yeah, it, it, to me, it saves a day. To me, it's worth it. Again, I think it's a, uh, when, you know, a lot of guys, I didn't, I also didn't have problems with flats too often before I started running bibs, bib mooses, excuse me, Brady. Um, the, the, uh, because I was more careful. It's funny you, when you know that you can get a flat and you see a big sharp edge rock, you back off or you try to get the front end up or you do this or that. I mean, you, you change the way you're riding to um, try not to get a flat. When you start running mooses, all of a sudden you start slamming into things. And if your suspension is done right and set up well, then you just hit those things and you keep going and you don't worry about it. Then if you go back to tubes, um, the, you start getting flats and that's what I've done. I, I one point went back to uh, tubes for money's purposes and it uh, didn't, you know, the very first ride in five minutes, I got a front. <laughs> Bib is the name of the, yeah, thanks man, Moose. I know, I'm terrible about that, Mark. I, I've i called him Bibs for so long. The, uh, yeah, Nitro Moose, it says right on it, Nitro Moose. Thank you, Mark, for clearing that up. I'm, yeah, anyway. <laughs> I've, I was a Michelin guy for so long, I just got used to calling them bibs. So I'll try to be better. But yes, they are moose, moose tubes. Um, yeah, Josh, yeah, I think, I mean, I tried to do my best. I, like I said, they're not for everyone. And, and I tell my customers that all the time. Mooses are not for everyone. Um, first of all, they're not honestly great for a dude on a really, really, really tight budget. If you're just a trail rider who's on a tight budget, and you're just putting around the mountains, having a great time, smiling and laughing at your helmet and having like the most fun ever. Um, and you're not super concerned about um, uh, hitting things really hard or racing. There's zero reason to spend $250 on your uh, tire setup. 
because it's just not worth it. Um, I talk people out of it all the time, honestly. Uh, but if you have the budget, if you have a little disposable income and you have uh, a shop that's willing to change them or you're willing to learn how to change them and you just want to reduce all the hassle and problem in your life, and I mean all your life actually, you talk to your wife, talk to your kids, it'll pretty much just alleviate all problems um, <laughs> if you don't have flats. But yeah, they're great. You put, you put them in, you don't worry about it. You, for me, you lube it every time you change a tire and you're good to go. Um, so yeah, I just think they're, I think they're great. So any other questions? Wait, what time is it, Sheer? 8.10. It's 8.10, so I'm past time. Um, I'm gonna head out right now. I thank every last one of you for watching. I'm gonna try to make this a very regular thing. Um, uh, next, I had an idea. Why don't you guys um, comment on this thing or send me a message on the what you want me to do next for the next 30 minute um, uh, live show at Highland Cycles. Um, pick a topic, man. I, I'm sure I have an opinion about it. Uh, have a great time. I hope everybody gets out and rides their dirt bikes.